I'm Annie and I am the proper stitcher and welcome to episode number 86. If this is your first time joining me, I am so glad you stopped by today. This is a channel where I like to talk about cross stitch and quilting and hopefully give you inspiration to fully finish your projects. And if you're returning, thank you so much for your continued support and all your wonderful comments. I appreciate each and every one of you. Today's video is going to be a tutorial video. Um, I have promised you all another tutorial video. This is going to be um, a tutorial on how I'm going to finish JBW Designs French Country Bunny. I stitched him and showed him to you in my last video, but this is French Country Bunny. I stitched him on 32 count antique white by Belfast Linen, and I used coffee um, black coffee by Classic Color Works. I used two strands of floss over two. But what I'm going to show you to do, to, how I'm going to finish it today, is I'm going to finish it in, similarly to this, the way I finished my French Country and More by JBW Designs. I finished it on a Stitch Etc. board, and I am going to do the same on my uh, French Country Bunny. So I'm going to show you all the steps on how I do this, how I'm going to finish it. Um, I'm even going to show you how to do a bow. Um, all of those details and I made a video when I finished this piece and I thought it would be good to do another one since that was over a year ago. Maybe I can explain things a little bit better or just for those of you who need just another explanation or another way to do it. One thing I need you to know is my philosophy on finishing and on cross stitch in general is I would rather have a finished project than a perfect project. And I say that often, and I don't want people to misunderstand what I mean by that. I am not saying that I want my projects to be messy and sloppy, and I don't want them to be perfect. I'm just saying I would rather see my projects finished. And, and the only way for us to get comfortable finishing our pieces is through practice. So I want to remove the fear of finishing and the hesitation of finishing because you feel like you cannot do it right or that you're scared you're gonna mess up your piece or, or any number of things, any number of reasons why you're not finishing your projects. I wanna remove that hesitation from, from the process so that you get more comfortable doing it and that therefore you continue and hopefully continue to finish your pieces. Um, it just does not mean that I don't want my pieces to look good. It just means I don't want to be afraid to finish my pieces. So I am going to share with you all the steps that I do to finish this board and to finish on this board. And hopefully that'll clarify some things. I've done other tutorials in the past. I've done pillow tutorials. Um, and you know, hopefully those will um, be helpful for you. Um, I have made mistakes in my tutorials. I tell you when I make mistakes, I am not a professional finisher. Never said that I was a professional finisher. I am just like everybody else, just trying to figure out how to finish my pieces so that I can enjoy the pieces that I have stitched, all my cross stitch pieces that I've stitched. So. Here we go. I am going to stop the camera, turn it around, and we're gonna get started on how to finish the French Country Bunny. Just realized you'd probably like to see a list or items that I'm using to finish my piece on. So here's what you're going to need. You are going to need your um, 
fabric for your finishing on your mounting board, similar to this. So background fabric. So I am using Chelsea's Checks by Stitching with the Housewives. This is Chelsea's Checks. So it's between Chelsea's Checks or Priscilla's Pretty Plaids, but I'm gonna go with Chelsea's Checks. So you'll need your backing fabric. You will need sticky board. I like to use this kind of sticky board. I get it from the Fat Quarter Shop. This is called Press On Self Stick. I'm gonna list it below. I'm gonna list the fabric below. Um, and the reason I like this uh, sticky board the best is because it's easy to cut and easy to peel the paper off. So, sticky board. The next thing you're going to need is interfacing. Um, fusible interfacing. And that's what this is. I use the P44F interfacing and you're going to want some quilt batting. I like to have a little cushion on my boards because I like for them to just have that look of just having a little bit of puffy with it. Um, so I use quilt batting for that. You will need glue. So I use the Eileen Tacky Glue or you can use hot glue, either one of those. Yes, I use glue. Yes, it's fine to use on your cross stitch pieces. For one reason is the Eileen's Tacky Glue, um, I think I'm saying that right, Eileen's Eileen's Tacky Glue is for needlework. So it, it dries clear, it's easy to work with. Hot glue, the reason I think it's okay to use is because you're using it on the back of the sticky board. It is not gonna come in contact with your cross stitch piece. Just like the sticky board is not gonna come in contact with your cross stitch piece because I am putting quilt batting there. But even if it even if it did touch your cross stitch piece, it's fine because it's sticky board made for needlework and cross stitch. So all fine. This is not the 80s where things were not acid free. Everything is fine to use on your cross stitch pieces now. Okay, so, um, and then any kind of trim or ribbon that you're going to want to use, I'm not sure how I'm going to finish it. So I just pulled several different types of trim, rickrack. Um, I've got my button making kit with some scrap fabric in case I decide to make a button. Um, Teresa with Jersey Girl Stitch Company sent me some beautiful pins. I'm trying to pick them up. Some beautiful pins that I am going to put um, in the piece on the board. And I will link her website below. And I, again, I'm not sure how I'm gonna finish it, but I have just several different spring type um, flowers. And then I have set aside, I've got my, my thread is getting hung up on everything. I have need, I was so organized. I have needles ready to go with, with um, thread for the ribbon. So I'm gonna show you how to make a bow. I think I'm gonna put a bow on these. If I don't, I'll still show you how to make a bow, if not in this video, then in another. But I have my needle and thread ready to go in case I decide to um, make a bow for this for this um, finish. So, so that's ready to go. And we have a ruler. I have rulers for cutting. I have my swing line guillotine, which I'm gonna show you how to use this. Um, I have the board from Stitch Etc that I'm gonna mount the piece on. I'm gonna list all these below. But this is called the Tyler board. You can buy these from Stitch Etc. It's six, about six inches by six inches. Um, so what I did is I just come in a little bit. So it's slightly, the design or the finishing area is just slightly smaller than six by six. And then you're going to want scissors and maybe a rotary cutter too. Pen and paper for taking notes and for measurements. So that's all you need for finishing this. So let's get started. Okay, so I have everything ready to go. I have my board, I have my stitched piece, I have my fabric, I have my sticky board. So what I wanna show you is the measurements of this board. The measurements of the board and my stitched piece. So when I did the French Country Amore, it was a little different because the heart and the and the wording were, it was pretty much square. 
It's not like that with the bunny. The bunny is more rectangular. So I am going to, I had to fussy cut a little bit of this. So just because I wanted to fit, I wanted my piece to be a little bit more like a square, even though it's a rectangular. Hope that makes sense. So what I did first is I measured my board and the board is about six and a quarter by six and a quarter, but we've got these little divots up here. So I really wanted it to be more like this. So there's six and a half by six. So what I did is I cut my mat board to be six, excuse me, six and a half by six and a half. So I'm going to show you how I cut that. Actually, did I cut that six and a half? I did a little bit of work ahead of time. Let me see how I cut this. I, excuse me. I cut this five and three fourths by five and three fourths because I still wanted a little bit of the blackboard to be visible. So this is five and three fourths by five and three fourths. So anything that we're cutting we and we want to show something behind it, we just need to determine how much of that we want to show. In this case, I wanted about a quarter of an inch. So five and three fourths by five and three fourths, and which meant that I had to then determine how big I wanted my stitched piece to be. So the board for my stitched piece, I cut five by five because I wanted to see the fabric around it. So I wanna show you how I did that. So first let's cut our sticky board. This is gonna be a little loud, I apologize but we're gonna cut our sticky board. And I've already done that, but I wanted to show you how I cut a piece of sticky board. So this is the swing line guillotine, and I got mine off of Amazon. So we're going to cut this sticky board five and three fourths by five and three fourths. So what I do here is I find my five and three fourths, I open this blade, it is sharp, be very careful, and I line up the board to the five and three fourths mark. And then I cut it. Then you turn it one time, line it up to five and three fourths or whatever the next dimension is that you choose. And you cut that. And that gives us this square piece of sticky board. And, the, and then you do the same for your next piece. Save your scraps. I use pieces like this. So if you have a really long, piece of sticky board and you're and you're having to um, butt up two pieces of sticky board together for a long piece like my alphabet hearts, I use these to support the back. That is a trick I learned from Priscilla from Stitching with the Housewives. Everything that I'm showing you today, I have learned from watching Vanna Pfeiffer tutorials to Stitching with the Housewives to Trial and Error to listening to other people and how they finish. I um, I just think that we can learn so much from, from, from everybody. So I have my boards cut. So that's five and three fourths by five and three fourths. And then I have a piece of my, um, so next piece is going to be for my bunny. So what I did is I decided I want to see enough of my fabric around my stitched, uh, around my backing. So I decided to go ahead and cut my next piece. And what I did is I cut it six by six. Oh, sorry. I cut it five by five. I said six by six. That's how much fabric I cut. So five by five. So that when I put my squared up on my um, cross stitch piece, it's a square because he is more rectangular and this is more square. So normally what I would do is I would measure from my furthest edge of my stitched piece, I would measure how far out I want, usually about an inch and a half to two inches to wrap it around the sticky board. But again, since he is a different shape, he's a little bit more rectangular, I decided to visualize the square and cut him bigger. So I, I cut down my cross stitch piece to be six by six. So let's get the interfacing ironed onto these pieces. I also show you in my last video on when I did this on how I cut. 
So you're always welcome to go back and reference how I cut my um, square pieces for the cross stitch pieces. So the fabric's been cut. And now what we're going to do is attach our batting to it, the sticky board. We're gonna do that first and then I'll iron on the interfacing and we'll iron the fabric. So this sticky board peels right off. Usually it's pretty easy to just peel the little paper. You just peel the piece back. Let me get it going, there we go. So we peel it back and you are welcome to measure and cut and do all that, but I'm just gonna put it right here and cut around the square. It makes, it saves time. It keeps me from having to do math, which I'm not good at. And then I'm gonna do the same to the, the next board. A lot of how I do my finishing, and a lot of people don't like to hear this, is I eyeball a lot of things. Um, again, I'm not a professional finisher. I just do what works for me, and I know in the end I can make it make it work for me. So I'm going to cut that batting. So now we have our batting on our squares. So I'm going to set those aside for a moment, and I'm going to pull over my iron. So here's my iron and I am going to iron my fabric. So here is the backing fabric, the Chelsea's Checks. And Chelsea's Checks fabric, just like the Priscilla's Pretty Plaids, it comes in a lot of different colors. I'm just using the black for this. So this will go with the the bigger board or the bigger sticky board. And, but before I do anything, I am going to iron on the interfacing on my bunny. I, I'm gonna tell you about these little cheat marks in just a minute. This is how I centered my stitched piece. But first I'm going to iron on my interfacing. You are welcome to measure this out before you iron it but I am going to just cut it around and iron it on directly. I need to get more interfacing. I use so much of it. Okay, and we're gonna trim it up some more whenever I get it ironed on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna iron the bumpy side to the backing of your cross stitch piece. The reason I like to use interfacing on my pieces, even though it's not a pillow, I use it for pillows because it helps protect the piece when you're stuffing, but I also like to use it on my board finishes because I think it gives it just a little bit more substance and um, just helps it stand up a little bit more this is optional, you don't have to do it. This is how I do it. So I've ironed that on and now I'm going to trim off my extra. So it doesn't get in the way when I go to glue it. So now that we have the interfacing on, we are ready to glue this to our prepared piece of sticky board. So, let me do this. Okay. Okay, so let's do our bigger piece first. So this is the piece that I cut five and three fourths by five and three fourths to fit on the Tyler board. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the spray Eileen's glue and I'm going to just mist a little bit of it. I'm going to spray a little bit of it to the quilt batting so that it can stick to my fabric. 
Now, when you're looking at a plaid like this and you're wanting to keep it straight, I'm just gonna show it to you from the front side, is if you notice these, these checks, they're in a straight line. So if you're wanting to keep it straight, when you lay down your piece of board, line it up on those dots or on those squares. So you can see, I'm gonna line it up on this row of checks. And then I know I'm in a straight line. And then I'm gonna lay it down. And now we're gonna glue it. So I have my Eileen's Tacky Glue. And I hope that it's, hope that it's open and ready to go. Sometimes they glue shut. My dogs are snoring. Okay, so I'm gonna do the corners first. Ooh, and it is ready to go. It's a little bit more than I needed. It was, it was really ready. So I'm gonna glue the corners first. And so you just take one corner and then you do the next. And the thing I like about the Eileen's glue is it really is easy to work. You can smooth it, you can play with it a little bit more. It's a little bit more forgiving than hot glue. Hot glue, once you, do, once you glue it down, you gotta work really fast. So I've got a little bit more than I need, so I'm gonna spread a little bit of that out. But hot glue is definitely another method that you can use. It is totally up to you. So now I'm ready to do the sides. So you just pick opposite sides, do those first, then do the other opposite sides. And so you glue about a quarter of an inch from the edge. Glue all the way across. And when you start, at, I like to start at the corner and I just start smoothing it down. And you just keep playing with it. And so I smooth it down. Until I get it as, as nice and tight and smooth as I like it. You can even check the side to see if it's how you like it. The Eileen's glue will dry clear, which is another reason I love it. You can get this at Joann's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Fat Quarter Shop, Amazon. All right, I'm gonna do this side. And I just, I'm constantly smoothing with my fingers. It, another tip I forgot to mention is you can have a wet napkin or a wet washcloth nearby and you can keep your fingertips clean. I forgot to get one. So I'll have to pause in a second and go get one. Okay, so let's do this side. So I'm just gluing about a quarter of an inch from the edge. And so now we're gonna do our first corner piecing here. We're gonna match up those corners. And this is where you wanna really kinda just pinch the corners to give them a nice, smooth, pointy corner. And then just keep working down so we can have cleaner corners. You can even take um, a needle and thread and sew those corners together if, if they're not meeting up the way you like them. These look like they did a pretty good job. So now we're gonna turn it over and do the other side. And again, about a quarter of an inch from the and it doesn't take a lot. Just remember the more glue you put on, the more you're gonna have to disperse or do something with and it can get messy. So you'll, you'll get an idea of how much you need, but it doesn't take as much as you think. But if you're using hot glue, you can't really smooth it like this because the glue is so hot. So that's another reason I'm, I really like the Eileen's. And so here I'm just pinching those corners together to make it a nice, smooth corner. And then I'm gonna look it over and you can see I have my corners done. Oop, 
Here's the back. Not pretty, but, and you don't want to have too much fabric um, for the backing because then it gets too bulky. So I usually like to work with anywhere between an inch to an inch and a quarter. Um, so I think that looks good. I am now going to do the cross stitch piece. So what I did on the cross stitch piece, because remember I wanted, this is a rectangular piece that I'm wanting to make square. Um, so I had, I knew what size my sticky board was. So what I did is I laid my sticky board on top of the stitched piece until I figured out where I wanted it. And then I measured around it an inch to an inch and a quarter so I knew how much to cut around it. That's how I determined how to cut this piece. And then I folded it in halves to come up with my center. So now I know where my center is. So what I'm gonna do is line up, and I've marked my center on here, so that I can now line up my center pieces and then I'm gonna play with it and see if I like the way it looks. And I think I'm down a little too far because the, the bottom of the P is hiding. So I'm gonna go down just a touch, but I know this is my center mark. So let's see. And that is perfect. That's exactly the way I want it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna spray a little bit of this because I don't want it to shift while I'm working with it. So I'm gonna come down just, oop, I went down too far. I'm gonna put him right back to where I had him. And now let me make sure that it's right. Okay, so now I'm gonna do my corners. My four corners. And I'm gonna do those first. And don't be afraid to kind of really pull them tight, not too tight to tear your, your fabric, but tight enough that you're gonna get that good point. Now your fabric might be thicker, especially if you're using an Ada. So you might need a little bit more glue on those corners and when you do this, see how that popped up. So let's get a little bit more Okay. And so what I do is I do the same as before, about a quarter of an inch from the edge. And I start in the corner. Now your fabric, again, this is gonna be a little bit thicker than your quilting fabric. And it's already wanting to pop up on me but I'm gonna work pretty fast with it. Oh, there we go. It's wanting to move. Another reason I like Eileen's, I can play with it a little bit more than I if I were using hot glue. So, I pulled that down. This popped up too. You have to use a little bit more than with the, the quilt fabric. Okay, so let's turn it. And then glue. And pull it down. Just really work with your fingers. And don't worry about how messy it's, gonna, it's looking because all of that is gonna be hidden behind your piece. I really need to go get a wet washcloth. Okay. Now let's do this side. And I can already see my corners are not matching up, so I'll have to pinch those. And usually when that happens is when you don't have them lined up just right. Okay, so we're gonna turn this way. I'm 
Okay. And pinch up some more. So just what I really want y'all to know is just don't be afraid because we have protected our piece. We have put interfacing on it. We have put a sticky board there. We have put Eileen's glue here. Um, so, so say I did mess up. Well, I can take all of this off. Now, it, it may be a little messy around it, but I can still take it off and, and keep working with it. Um, you can also give yourself a little bit more of a fabric allowance around your stitched piece if until you get comfortable with um, finishing it. So here he is. And I am gonna go in and pinch those corners just a little bit more, just so they, they're nice and pointed. Okay. But if you give yourself a little bit more of an allowance around your stitched piece, until you get comfortable finishing. So if you do make a mistake, you can then, you will at least know I can go in and um, I have enough fabric and enough, you know, an allowance to work with. So here he is, and he's gonna look so cute on this black and white um, backing. So I think what we're gonna do now, I do think I want to put um, some rick rack around him. This is Lori Holt. Be in my bonnet, um, vintage trim. I'll link it below. I love her Rick Rack. So I'm going to pause the video, go wash my hands, get a wet towel, and we're going to attach the Rick Rack with Eileen's glue. Okay, so I'm back. I just cleaned up my fingers and I am super excited. But I was a little skeptical about the black and the white because, I, like I said in my video the other day, I really wanted, I was thinking about stitching the bunny in blue or pink or your typical spring or Easter colors, but I really like him with the black. I think this is gonna be so much fun. Um, and if I want to keep him out for all year round, I can. He can, he would look cute in the kitchen. Okay, so he, or in a bathroom or anywhere, but I'm gonna do a rickrack all the way around him. And so what we're going to do, and just so you can see the back. So what we're going to do, once I get the rickrack on, then we'll attach and sandwich all the pieces together. There are other, so many ways to do Rick Rack. Um, I just do the glue as I go. <laughs> um, now on this Lori Holt Rick Rack, there are two sides. I mean, obviously there's two sides, but one side's a little bit, it, it, one side will look more like the back to you than the front. So just keep in mind that it's, that they're just, one side is different than the other um, as far as the way they feel. So I am going to, do a layer of glue and a little bit goes a long way on this. And I'm gonna trim off my end and I am going to, and I want really, I want a lot of the, the Rick Rack, the, the points to show. So I get, I, Put the bottom points on the glue and then I'm going to trim off the side a little bit more than that so that when you turn it around you're going to see a lot you're gonna see the the it's gonna keep your rickrack even and you're gonna see those um, the top points so now we're gonna do the next side. So I'm gonna glue and get my ends kind of evened up a little bit. And I'm cutting it at, a, at an angle so that they can hopefully match up. So we're gonna just dot those in place and then trim over here. And then I got glue on my fingertips, so I'm wiping it off on my, my little wet rag. 
And then I'm gonna take a peek, make sure that it's the way I want it to look. Again, with the Eileen's glue, if I don't like how it looks, I can go in and fix it. See, I don't like how that corner is. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna trim it up just a little bit. And then we're gonna do the next side. You all may have another way, or someone's taught you another way. My way is not right. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying this is how I do it. Um, everybody has a way that works for them. And that is okay. So here we go. A little bit more. Bella is really snoring today, guys. I am so sorry. And then I want to cut right here. Oop, I moved it. Okay, so let's take a peek. This is how we're looking. So far, so good. One last corner, or one last side. And I'm going to put glue down. And we will now attach want that corner to be too bulky so I'm going to trim it just a little bit okay so let me get this glue off my fingers and I'm now going to trim up over here make sure this is in place and I can already see one space that I'm probably going to trim. So hold on one second. Yep, right here. I'm not, this little corner is not my favorite. So let me trim that down right here. There we go. And I'm going to trim this a little bit more. And I'm going to put a little bit more glue right here because it wants to pop out there. So now we have the rickrack on all four sides. So I'm gonna let that dry for just a second. But I don't wanna glue any anything to the board until I know that this is the way we want it. And I am gluing it um, all of this these layers to the board using hot glue. But let's look at this first and see if we like it. So this is what it looks like so far. And I think he looks really dapper. I am liking him a lot. My rickrack is coming out. So I'm gonna let that just sit for just a second before we attach it all together. So, and we could stop right here. and We can say no bow, nothing, and, and be completely happy with him. So, and that might be what I do. We'll play with the bows and see, because I really want him to be a little bit of a simple finish, if that makes sense. Um, so let's, let's now glue them together. You can, you can use hot glue here if you want, which is totally fine. I'm gonna get some of that glue off of the fabric. You can use hot glue to glue them together, but I'm gonna use the Eileen's glue because sometimes the hot glue can warp your sticky board and I don't want that to happen. Okay, so I'm gonna smear this in a little bit because I don't want it to be too bulky or too glumpy. So I'm gonna smear it in just a little Kind of like spackle. Put a little bit more here. Okay, so now I'm going to attach him to the board. And I really want to make sure my fingers are clean. So I'm going to now press him down. So 
So that is now glued to this piece. So I am gonna let him dry for just a little bit and then I'll be right back. Okay, so the sticky board, or the Rick Rack is dried, the two pieces have dried together, and now I'm going, and I had to uh, place a heavy book on top of it. So um, now we're going to glue my sandwich, my ice cream sandwich, to our Tyler board. So I already have my hot glue gun ready to go. So I'm gonna pull it over. And I am going to, and it doesn't take a lot, I'm just gonna go around the corners, or the, the edges, the four sides. And, and then I'm just gonna put a little bit in the middle here. Does not take a lot. And I am going to make sure we I glue it down the right way. And I am just going to place it right on my board. And I'm going to put a heavy book on it just to kind of smooth it out. Make sure it's flat. And there you go. That is our bunny, uh, French country bunny on a Tyler board. And so, like I said, you can stop right here and be done and have a simple finish, no bow. You can even put little buttons or tacks in the corner, make it look like it's tacked on here. That would be super cute. I love the way the Rick Rack just pulls it all off together. So I am going to do a simple bow. I've decided to do a simple bow. Um, and let's, and I've played around with a couple of the colors. I have this white grow grain ribbon, but I think it's too plain and the whites don't match because this is an antique white and that is a stark white ribbon. So I'm gonna rule this ribbon out. This is the Stitching with the Housewives ribbon. And at first I thought, I would like to coordinate the fabrics, you know, the fabrics and the stripes and the dot, uh, the, the checks with the stripes. But I think it was just too much for me. So I'm going with this black ribbon with the white dots or the white um, sewn trim. I got this at Joann's. So what we're going to do is I already have my, my black thread ready to go with a double knot at the end. So go ahead and get your, your um, thread ready. So what I do first is I play around with how wide I want my ribbon to be, or my bow. Do I want it to be the width of it? I really don't want it to be that big. So I play around with it for just a few loops to see. So because this is a a narrow ribbon, I'm going to have to double it up a couple of times to give the bow a little bit more substance. Um, if it were a fatter ribbon, I would only do probably one time. Um, I had some other ribbon that I was gonna try. One had black and white with, with um, a burlap, but the brown was just not coordinating the way I wanted it to. So what I do is I loop the first loop of the bow I figure out how wide I want it to be. And that's half of it. So that's half of your bow. So that's about the width that I want it to be. And then I'm going to loop it around and have a little bit of a tail. The tail can be trimmed down, but I loop it around and have a little bit of a tail. And then I take the other half of the loop and I loop it to the back. So now I have just sort of this, the one half of a bow, or I have, you can even stop there and that can be your bow. That can be the size of your bow. But I think because this is a narrow ribbon, I want to do that same step twice. So I'm gonna come back over. Let me give myself a little bit more ribbon to work with. So I'm gonna come back over 
and I did one loop here and then I'm going to go back and do so now I have two loops on each side so that's going to be about the width of my bow and so what I'm going to do, because I think I have it the way I want it, I'm gonna put a pin in place through all layers of my bow. I'm gonna put that pin in place until I figure out for sure if this is how I want it. And I'm gonna go ahead and trim it just because it's, and I'm gonna trim it longer than I need because I can always trim it again. I know that's wasteful, but that's just what I'm doing. So that's about, the, the width that I want. It's not the same width as the, as the board, but it's a big enough bow that it's going to give us some substance. You can do it again, have three loops on each side, but I didn't want to get too many, too many bows going. This pin is holding all of those layers together for me until I can get my thread in there. So what I'm going to do is sew all of those pieces together. So once I get this in, I'm gonna remove my pin. So that goes in, and then all I am doing is going, taking my thread, I'm gonna remove this now. I am taking my thread and my needle, and I am sewing all of these layers together. I'm just doing an X because I want them all to be together. So just do that several times until you feel like it is secure. You're not going to see this part in your bow, so don't worry what it looks like. I've got this around my loop. Hold on one second. Let me fix this. So what I did is I got the tail stuck in there and I didn't want that to happen. Okay. So keep going. I'm sewing all those layers together. And then once you feel like you have enough in there, probably did this about six times. It just depends on how much, how many layers you have will determine how long it takes for you to feel like it's secure. So I've got a little tail here I'm gonna trim off. That's from where I tied my knot. All right, so all of those layers are, are sewn together. So now I'm gonna take my string that's still attached to my needle and I'm gonna wrap it around my bow, the center of the bow. And as I'm wrapping it, I'm pulling it taut so it gives me that nice center of a bow. So I'm gonna just keep wrapping it until I feel like it's enough to, to cinch it all together. Once you get it the way you want it, then I'm going to knot it off in the back and I just go through some of the layers and the thread, and I'm just gonna make a knot. Go through the loop. Go, oop, I can't get my hands around it. Go through that loop and pull it through. I'm gonna do it one more time just to make sure it's secure. and knot it one more time. Okay, now I'm gonna cut that thread and I'm going to, now if you had a wire edge ribbon, those are great for making bows because then you can really make those bows stand up, the, the ends stand up. So here is my bow and I'm pretty happy with it. 
pretty happy with how it looks. So I, but I think this still needs a little bit more because it's so much black. So I have decided I am going to make a button and we're gonna put a button right in the middle and it's gonna be the matching fabric. So I use the Sewology button covers and this is the seven eighths inch mold. They have all sizes of molds you can, you can buy and it has great instructions on the back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our, our two pieces that press in the button and we're going to get two pieces for the cover, for, to make the button cover. And I already trimmed some fabric. For our button. So what we do first is we want to trim, we want to take this piece of our, um, this is the mold, we want to take this piece of the button cover kit and we're going to trace around here so we know how much to cut. I'm going to come over to the corner just so I don't waste as much fabric. And this, you just trim around or you um, trace around the button mold and then you cut that circle. So you can see I made that little, so I'm gonna cut that circle with my fabric scissors. You can fussy cut your button covers, um, or you know when you do this, if you have a cute fabric that has like flowers or something on it, you can fussy cut the mold over one of those. That would make a cute little needle minder um, if you want to make these, would put a magnet on the back, be great little gifts. Okay, so now we did that. This is how we're going to assemble it. So this is the actual button top. This is what you will see here at the top of our um, bow. So we are going to put this piece of fabric on our circle mold, take our button, and we're going to press these in here together. So we're just going to pop this in here. You want to kind of get it even, otherwise you'll have too much fabric on one side. So we pop it in there and I, I'm going to have to redo that. Okay, so let's put this right in here, I'm trying to keep it from not being uneven. There we go. Then we take this piece of our, I may have cut it too small. I think I did. I think I cut my fabric too small. I did, I cut my fabric too small. Okay, let's do that again. I'm gonna pause it. Hold on, I'll be right so back. So here we go, we've got our fabric, we've got our button cover, and we're gonna pop it all in there together. I made the circle a little bit bigger so that I know I have enough fabric to, to smush in there. And now we're going to attach the back of the button into the button cover. So this tool is what does all the work for us. So we're gonna take this little blue tool here and we're gonna line it up or you're just gonna poke it in there. And we just mash it down. And what this is doing is it's pressing that fabric into the button. And then we pop it out. And we have a little button cover. So this, we can either sew it on there or glue it. I'm gluing it. So I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna pinch it or use your scissors, something to, to poke that through. You can buy these, I think, without the the um, that there, but I just poked it through. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue all of this to our board. And I'm gonna just use hot glue for that. So let me clean up my mess. Okay, 
So first things first is I want to make sure that I don't have any, any um, strings showing. And I, I'm going to trim my tail just a little bit. There. Okay, so let's glue this. And my glue gun is still nice and hot. And we're going to figure out exactly where on the board we want it. You can go up higher with it. You can, I like mine to be a little bit closer to the actual sticky board and, and finished piece. So I'm gonna put my glue dot right here. It's more of a dot. I'm gonna do more of a line, my glue line. And I'm just going to press it in place. and hold it there. Okay, so that is glued. And now I'm gonna glue my button right in the center. So let's get a good piece of, a good amount, a good dot of glue right in the middle of the our bow. And I'm going to place this bow, this button right there. I've got strings everywhere. Oh, it's so cute. I love it. Okay. Whoop. I want to make sure it really holds tight. So there we go. There's our bow with our button. So when you do a bow, you can do any with the bow and you, once you figure out the loops and how many loops you want to do, use a straight pin and hold all of that in place. Then get your needle and thread and sew it, stitch it all together so that when you wrap your string around the center of the bow, it's all together. You don't have to worry about things shifting or moving on you. And then it's easier to manipulate and work with the, the, the loops. So that should be glued down. Now these are the these are the amazing pins that Jersey Girl Stitch Company, Teresa with Jersey Girl Stitch Company sent me. She sent me these, these are black and white. It has a little bunny on it, beautiful crystals, wonderful, wonderful craftsmanship and great choices of beads and colors. She sent me um, some blue and green ones to go on my other spring finish. I'm going to do a tutorial on in a few weeks. I can't wait to use those, but these I'm going to just stick in the, um, sticky board or the, the, the pitch, the stitched piece, the linen, and I'm just going to do the two of them together. And we can play around with where they are in the, in the stitched piece. But I just love those. I might move them down a little bit more so they're not in the way of the, the bow. She does an amazing job with her, with her pins. Beautiful, beautiful decorative pins. Great for drums, great for pin cushions, and in this case, great on our flat board finish. Let's take a break. We're gonna come back together and I'm gonna show this to y'all up close. Okay, I'm back. I hope that was helpful for you all. Um, I am not, like I said, I'm not a professional finisher. I'm not set up really to do tutorials. That's why I don't do very many of them, but a lot of you just asked me to do another one. Um, this is so cute. I'm so happy with how this turned out. This is JBW Designs French Country Bunny. I stitched him on 32 count Belfast linen, antique white. I used black coffee, classic color works, two strands of floss over two. I decided to use the French words at the bottom. You can make this a baby um, ornament. You can make this, um, you can make it, you can even stitch the word bunny if you don't want to do the French Le Pen. Um, I used the amazing push pins from Jersey Girl Stitch Company. We use the Chelsea's Checks from Stitching with the Housewives, Lori Holt. A vintage trim a Rick Rack. This is some ribbon I got at Joann's and we made a button cover. 
Uh, we used sticky board, we used Eileen's glue, we used hot glue, we used quilt matting, batting, we used interfacing, we did all kinds of stuff. But as you can see, nobody was hurt making this video. My stitched piece came out just fine. I think we did a really good job. I love the corners. I, um, each time I do this, I think my corners get better and better. Um, I really, really have gotten better at pinching and working with it and manipulating the glue. That's another reason why the more you finish your projects, the better you get at it and the more confident you feel doing it. Um, I'm really happy with how he turned out. I used the Stitch Etc. Tyler board. Uh, you can call Stitch Etc. She has a lot of the black. She has a lot of other colors. The black is great for so many things. Just if you, looking at all of the new designs coming out with bumblebees, have y'all seen the heart and hand uh, design? All of their new spring um, patterns coming out. Bumblebees will look cute on this. Sunflowers, Halloween pieces. It's a really good size. But I am so over the moon happy, excited with how this turned out. I'm really, really pleased with it. I wanted it to be simple. Um, I didn't want it to be too much. Didn't want it to be too frou-frou. I really wanted to accentuate the Jersey Girl Stitch Company pins. Thank you so much, Teresa. Um, I hope this was helpful. Um, again, I'm not a professional finisher. I'm not set up to do tutorials. So um, hopefully this worked out for you. I think more than anything, I wanted y'all to see the process, kind of like me talking out loud to myself while I'm finishing, because I do that. I do talk to myself. Um, but just so you know the process, um, I'm not perfect. I don't always do the math. Sometimes I eyeball it. Um, you can do what works for you. Um, I get more frustrated when I try to make things exact and get the exact number and get the exact measurement. And then I end up cutting it too short or too big or too whatever. So I, I look at the piece, I eyeball it. I look at it with a ruler and say, okay, that's the size I want. I'm going to add a half an inch to it. Just what works for you. But once you do this a few times, you will get better and better at it. Um, just have fun with it. And you know, that's all I say. Just have fun. And just remember, I would rather have a finished project than a perfect project. Go watch other tutorials. I will link Vonna Pfeiffer below. She has amazing tutorials on how she finishes um, her pieces. Just go and check out her channel. Um, so many, so many wonderful tutorials out there. So I will do another video again soon on um, how I'm finishing things. I'm going to try something new. Um, I'm going to do a stand-up piece. I've never done that before, so I'm going to try that um, here in a few weeks. And I'm going to take y'all along with me on the journey because, again, I want you to hear me talk it out to myself and say, okay, I can do this. It's not not going to not going to be hard. I can do this. So until next time, thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you for my regular video soon.